We built a, uh, an upside down room. Was that your little idea? Or? I don't know if it was, you know. There's so, so much of that stuff is, is collaborative. Right, right. Um, and, um, you know, there's the famous sequence with Fred Astaire dancing all around the room in whatever that movie was. Whatever that movie was. Yeah. <clears throat> we'll just, we'll do, what we'll do is we'll cut, we'll just do this for a few seconds. Mm -hmm. and we'll, we'll just get you recording. <laughs> Thing is the the uh, the industry typically, particularly the studios, the executives, they want to pigeonhole everybody who works in the business to a certain degree. You move from these, you know, you, you don't you, you said you did action, and you're you're known for doing these horror movies now, Halloween, Halloween Two, The Thing, and then you get on to Back to the Future, which I'm assuming was. 1985, because it's mm -hmm. forever imprinted in our minds. Mm -hmm. right. um, was there any resistance from the studio or from anyone about? Yeah, I, I think that your your previous resume, your you know, yeah. your, your your filmography, uh, what you've done in the styles and stuff, uh, always helped. I did a couple of comedies and things like that, and uh, I have had applied for a job that was uh, a dark suspense thing and people say well at the time they said well he's he's done these comedies and things but this is a suspense thriller you know can he really do that and and they had to say well have you ever seen halloween they had they actually yeah, had to bring that up exactly you know because uh, unless they the imdb now makes it easy to do that but right. until then they relied on you to provide the filmography and if they didn't have one or the agent didn't hadn't included something right. In my case, I had worked with uh, Bob Zemeckis on, yep. on yep. Romancing the Stone. Right. And Bob came to me and said, well, you know, I'm going to do this thing that, um, that Spielberg is, you know, sort of fostering. Yep. It's uh, an unusual kind of fantasy thing. You know, are you in? And I said, well, of course. And, uh, you know, you read it and it was was such an unusual take on time travel. You know, they, right. they had been saying to Bob, again, pigeonholing, uh, well, uh, it's, a, uh, it's a time travel movie. They don't do very well, you know, because they were <laughs> referencing. They don't do very well. Oh, people don't go see a Western, right? right? Well, why would you want to make a pirate movie? Right. People don't go see it. And then you make a pirate movie that does appeal. You know, Pirates of the Caribbean or whatever. Right. So it was the same with time travel. And we said, no, 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 this is different time travel. This is accessible to people. It's not in the future and it's not a... a it's not existential. No. This is about something we've all dreamed about. Going back and fixing something we thought wasn't right. Only to discover that we really should... <laughs> What is it you're oh, talking I'm, about? <laughs> I'm, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? Some I'm, actors. I'm getting... You, 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 the, the, I'm, I'm, you're the only one I care about. I hear, right? I hear voices. Yeah. In my, I hear the voices. It's, it's all in your head. They're, they're telling you're talking about cabin fever earlier? It's all, yeah. It's all, it's yeah. 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 <laughs> Who was that? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. Mr. Mr. Cooper Gooding Jr. <laughs> what? I, I, I digress. Yes. <laughs> or they did. They digressed, yeah. yeah. So where was I? Oh, yes. Yeah. So uh, it, was a, it was a movie that was, um, you know, a, a whole different take on time travel. Right? When you read the script, mm -hmm. did you say to yourself, this is the most perfectly structured screenplay I've ever read? Well, it, yes. At the time, you know, I, I marveled and a lot of people marveled at the fact that it was so tightly written, so well conceived. If you watched the movie or read the script, you would say, well, wait, what about, you know, this would have, oh, wait, they did solve that. The original script that Bob and, and Bob had, had written, that Marty goes back and gives Doc Brown a few hints, right. right, about technology and so forth. What occurs is Doc invents some things, becomes a big successful guy, uh, in 
science and industrial design or you know technology, whatever, and the present, you know that, yep. that Marty goes to, yep. is the same one that I remember in Popular Mechanics magazine in the 50s and 60s, which is by now we're all in flying cars. Right. Exactly. All of the technology that they claimed was going to happen uh, back in the 50s, Doc has made it come true. So is that what led to Back to the Future 2? Is that taking, unearthing these things that they wanted to put in the original script? And I, th I think so. And, and interesting, because Back to the Future 2 and 3 yeah. were originally one script. Yeah, you shot them back to back, right? And yeah, they, they, they said, well, we can't, it's too long and too expensive. So how do we fix that? Well, we'll take this out. Right. Well, because it was so well constructed, yeah. you take that out, it affects this. So it screwed up everything. Right. So uh, finally, I think it was Kathy Kennedy said, well, it seems obvious. Why don't we make it Back to the Future 2 and, and three. 3, and we will get two movies for the price of one and a half. And we'll all get paid a little more. Well. Not, not a bad thing. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't remember that part. But, <laughs> but, well, Back to the Future 2 is a darker version, but it was necessary for the journey to get to 3, right. the Old West and the Happy right. ending. And, and I think that people didn't realize at the time that they really had to go through two in yeah. order to appreciate three. Now, if you watch it as a trilogy, you can see how perfectly, perfectly you know, structured and calculated everything is. Right. You know? I just want to ask about one little thing and mm -hmm. say, how did you do it? How did you have to put that together, special effects wise? and photography-wise, mm -hmm. and how would you do it today? Which is Doc showing Marty about, you know, how the, how the machine works, the DeLorean works. Watch this, watch this. How did you shoot that then? Well, we went out to the mall, yep. had a, a car, a DeLorean, yep. drive at presumably 88 miles an hour, right. probably closer to about 30 or 40. It would zoom past the camera. And then we had a special effects guy, Kevin Pike, who would, um, he had built this rig that sprayed a flammable liquid on the pavement and light it and those tire tracks were actual real flames. Then we shot a, um, a Marty and Doc on a blue screen yep. so they could be composited into that shot. Now, you know, you'd, you'd have several options which uh, are things like you would, um, you know, just shoot them uh, reacting at the mall and then the visual effects people would, would add the, the flames, right. right? You'd build a digital car. Pretty commonly now for car commercials and stuff, you know, they're, they're digital cars, and they look pretty real. Action films require a tremendous amount of digital Assets. cars and, yeah. and things that roll and blow up right next to the star that you wouldn't dare put a rolling, blowing up car next to. Whereas when you were starting out, you'd think nothing about killing a star. It, it was the price of, of uh, success. Making, yeah, you know? making a good and movie. I, yeah. I rely, uh, rely now, my career is built around how many guys I killed. Right, with, um, with rolling cars. Exactly. Yeah, those uh, were the good yeah. old days though, right? Oh, uh, you know, it, the, there was no lawyers, insurance companies, any of that stuff. Which is why films have become big, elaborate, you know, comic book and right. action adventure. Right, right. Because... Um, Do you miss the practical stuff? Well, uh, to a certain extent, yeah, because, um, you know, yes, it's easier, you know, and sometimes more effective to do it digitally. But, um, you know, the, with that comes the price of, uh, often that it's all about the spectacle. You know, there's an awful lot of films that people now are complaining that they don't feel empathy for the characters. Hello? Hello, anybody home? Oh, okay. huh? Think McFly? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Would 
you say that your craft as a craft, your your you know not your talent, your talent was always there, but your craft developed over these years. You learn more from your mistakes than you do from successes. Successes are accidentally doing something right and not knowing you know what it is you did. Right. Film, and and I think that because if if I've done something that was new and unusual, uh, it allowed me the credibility to try something else, new and unusual. Roger Rabbit was, um, you know, the, one of the last pencil on paper, ink and paint on cells, animation films made. The technology was, you know, kind of simplistic. Uh, now you can do computer generated anything and the characters can handle, you know, objects. In those days, you had to manipulate an object, puppeteer it, in such a way that they could cover the rod or whatever held it with the animated character. It required a great deal of thought, great deal of technique, great deal of everything. And, uh, and it's one of the hazards, I think, of what we do, you know, Jurassic Park. The very first movie that used photorealistic computer-generated creatures. Had the entire it. country with their jaws to their right. chest um, in and, theaters. And now, you know, you can do that in your, in, you know, basement. basement. Uh, for 4 with, for yeah, 495 yeah. with a software you stole. Exactly. But in those days, you couldn't do it. Is this your first time working with Steven Spielberg as a director, by the way? Uh, I know you've no. done Hook. I'd done Hook before right. with him directing. And at the end of it, he said, uh, so, uh, well, it's been fun working. And I thought, well, this is goodbye. And he said, uh, so I'm going to do this little dinosaur movie, this action film, <laughs> um, you know. And Hook was such a big production that uh, Stephen was determined that this next little dinosaur movie, it was just a, you know, action-adventure movie, was going to be done on time and responsibly and on schedule and, and budget and all of that stuff. Right. The genesis of this whole thing was that Originally, the dinosaurs were going to be stop motion or go motion. In other words, really, the rubber, them practically rubber, with, yeah, rubber miniatures, yeah, uh, which you know you you set up a camera and you light this thing, and then you do one frame, click, yeah. yep, and then you move the arm a little bit and mm. you go click, and then you move the arm and the head a little bit and you go click, and then you move the arm and, and the head and the jaw a little bit. And you go click, and then you move the leg and a little bit. And this would take you at least and 18 you, months. Wait, to, I'm not yeah. done yet. Yeah, and then yeah, you yeah. move the tail a little bit, and you go click. And then you're, no. Anyway, it's, that was going to be the process. So um, we're, we're prepping the film, and it's determined that we can do, uh, on the budget, about 150 of these dinosaur shots. And Stephen was Ranging determined. Ranging in length from three seconds to? Yeah, three to five seconds is the basic uh, shot length of something like that. Right. And um, so it was going to be 150 of those. And as we would be storyboarding and production meetings and prepping the film, uh, Stephen would say, OK, so and then here's a shot. The dinosaur does this, and he grabs this. How many shots is that? And somebody would say, oh, that's 152. He'd say, oh, oh, no, no, okay, so let's see what we can eliminate. And he would go back, you know, and very carefully budget himself for the 150 shots. This is something that people need to hear, that, you know, even, you know you're talking about a master filmmaker, <coughs> height of his game. Right. And he's still, he's still trying to still trying ratchet to, down. Yeah, the, yeah. get the, the most out of it and be a responsible filmmaker. Because, right. you know, what we do um, in making a film is not just we go out and do what we want. But you have to learn to juggle how to do it within a certain time limit and for a certain budget. Right. Well, as we're just in the prep and he's talking about how many shots, Dennis Muren from Industrial Light and Magic, uh, George Lucas's special effects company, comes to a meeting and he says, you know what? We can do this in the computer, we think. And uh, everybody says, oh, really? Well, let's see the, uh, you know, your test. He said, well, we don't have any yet, but next week. So, goes away, comes to the production meeting the next week, and there's 
some video of a dinosaur wireframe moving. And you look at it and say, well, that looks pretty real. That's a good run. You, you sense the, the weight physics. of the tail, yeah. you know, and the head moving. You say, that's really good. Stephen says, well, now let's see what, uh, what it looks like with the skin on it. And they say, oh, well, you haven't done that yet. <laughs> but I'll, I'll but be, you're getting closer to shooting the movie at yeah. this point. He said, I'll be right back. So a week later, he brings one, and it's got a gray skin. It looks like it's made out of clay, but it's kind of flat. Right, the no texture is, or whatever. Yeah. So wait right here. I'll be right back. A week later, they come back, and it's lit. It runs through some shadows and stuff, and Stephen says, okay, you, you convinced me. We'll commit to this. We started the movie without knowing whether it would really work. Right. But we were all dedicated to making it work. Um, so we we devised all these tricks, and and, and uh, about half of it is rubber puppets. Right. So the the task of the CG guys, the computer guys, was to make the computer stuff match the real life puppets, which had skin and texture and lighting and all that stuff. So I would I would light it for the best look on the rubber, uh, which requires uh, the, what I had learned on the thing, which is you don't just flat light it, you've got a, a little spots and Contour. reflexes. And, and, and then the CG guys did an amazing job of matching uh -huh. to the puppets. There was the, the raptor in the kitchen scene, that famous kitchen yeah. sequence with all That's the steel. One of my favorite sequences in, in that movie and almost any movie yeah. I've done. Explain why that is one of one of your favorite sequences. Well, it's it, it is the quintessential combination of the computer, the rubber, the storytelling, yeah, um, and um, all of these other technicalities that aren't necessarily obvious. Yeah. Things like the kitchen was made out out of brushed stainless steel. Yes, brushed stainless is a unique surface material in that no matter where you put a light it is reflected so it was a very very technical process then what i had learned on roger rabbit which is to make non-real world creatures part of the real world you get them to interact with it so i would have suggestions about when he jumped up that they yeah. would knock a whole bunch of stuff off the top it's very effective because you know you get completely sucked into the kids uh, having to escape these, you know, lethal creatures, and how are they going to do it? And and you know, the girl outsmarting them with the reflection and all, all of the things that that make that such a complete filmic uh, experience. experience. Yeah. Not only making it, but as a result for the audience. <laughs> I recently heard something yeah. that was uh, meaningful to me, um, and it actually comes from a musical I had just seen in New York. Um, it's wonderful when the life you wish for comes true. Yes. I've been fortunate. Dean Kendrick, thank you for joining us. Yeah, my pleasure. Thank it's you. It's a real pleasure much. to have you. Yeah.